Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to discuss M.2 SSDs. Specifically, I'm going to compare M.2 SSDs to the more traditional 2.5 inch form factor SATA SSD, and then I'm going to discuss the broader implications of M.2 technology. So, here we have an M.2 SSD. It's the same one I showed you at the start of the video. I've just taken the label off so we can see things a bit more clearly. And as you can see, comparing it to my finger, it really is a very small storage device. And there's not a great deal to the hardware in terms of looking at the thing. We've got the connector down this end. We've got the flash memory chips on the top. And this is indeed a single-sided M.2 SSD. So if I turn it over, there aren't even any components on the other side of the device. This really is a very minimal, an amazingly small piece of storage technology. And just to give you a little bit of background, M.2 is a fairly new standard for connecting SSDs and other devices, things like Wi-Fi adapters and Bluetooth adapters as well, into computer motherboards. And M.2 replaces MSATA and was initially known as the Next Generation Form Factor, or NGFF. And today, M.2 is increasingly being used to connect devices not just to desktop motherboards, but also to the motherboards used in laptops and tablets. Many modern desktop motherboards now have one, two, or three M.2 slots. And so, for example, the Gigabyte H170 MDS3H that I recently used in an i7 build has one M.2 slot. And indeed, I'll be fitting this M.2 SSD into that slot later in this video. Now, different M.2 cards have different notches or cutouts in the connector to prevent them from being connected to slots incompatible with that device and also from being inserted the wrong way around. M.2 SSDs in particular can be keyed with either a B or an M slot or as here with both of these notches. M.2 cards come in a variety of lengths and widths which are coded into a four or five digit number. So, for example, this M.2 SSD uses a very common 2280 form factor, meaning that it's 22 millimeters wide and 80 millimeters long. Other common sizes for M.2 devices in general are 1630, 2230, 3030, 2242, 3042, 2260, and 22110. This said, if you're fitting an M.2 SSD into a desktop PC, it's most likely to be a 2280 device. This particular M.2 SSD is a SanDisk X400. The capacity is 1 to 8 gigabytes, although already there are 1 terabyte X400 M.2 SSDs. SanDisk also sell X400 SSDs in the 2.5 inch form factor, and if we put the M.2 X400 next to its 2.5 inch form factor cousin, you can see how incredibly small the M.2 SSD really is. And it's amazing to think that fairly soon we will have multi terabyte SSDs in the M.2 form factor. Again, comparing an M.2 SSD with a 2.5 inch form factor model, we should note that all modern 2.5 inch form factor SSDs have got a SATA 3 interface. And this means they can transfer data at up to six gigabits per second. In contrast, M.2 devices can feature a SATA, a PCIe or a USB interface. Although in practice, desktop M.2 SSDs will either use a SATA or a PCIe bus. Now here, this particular X400 SanDisk M.2 SSD has a SATA 3 bus exactly the same as that in its 2.5 inch companion here. And therefore, both of these SSDs, both the M.2 and the traditional 2.5 inch form factor model, will transfer data at up to 6 gigabits per second. So I'm not going to do a test comparing in this video, they come out exactly the same. However, some M.2 SSDs have a PCIe interface and that can transfer data at up to 32 gigabits per second, or other five times faster than traditional SATA 3. 
and for many people achieving PCIe speed is what really matters when you're purchasing an M.2 SSD. And in turn that means if you are going to get yourself an M.2 SSD, be very careful to be clear whether you're purchasing a PCIe or a SATA 3 device. The PCIe devices are much faster, although of course PCIe M.2 drives cost more than the SATA drives. To fit a traditional 2.5 inch SSD, you'll need to connect a SATA data cable like that, and you'll also need to connect a SATA power cable, and then you need to mount the SSD in your computer. In contrast, fitting an M.2 SSD is easier and neater, so all we need to do is to remove the retaining screw, get that out from there, if I can do it while it's not getting in your way. There we are, get the screw out from there. We then need to take the SSD, just neatly goes into the socket there like that, and then it just spring loads so it'll just drop down into place. If I just get my screw ready, and then we can just put the screw back in here, screw that down, and our drive is all mounted, and we have no wiring to worry about, no cable management, no drive mounting. It really is the easiest, the simplest method of installing a new drive in a desktop PC. This said, you do need to be aware that inserting an M.2 SSD into an M.2 slot on most motherboards will prevent the use of a related SATA socket. So here, for example, installing the M.2 SSD prevents the use of SATA port zero. In years to come, I think we will look back at the introduction of M.2 sockets on desktop PC motherboards as a really signature, a really important PC innovation. Now, partially that's because if you can plug in an M.2 SSD, you can get much faster data transfer speed if it's a PCIe SSD. That said, of course, we've had PCIe slot SSDs for motherboards for a long time to plug directly into standard PCIe slots, and today you could actually buy PCIe cards which will take multiple M.2 SSDs in a RAID configuration. So the speed issue has not been reliant on the introduction of M.2, and in fact it goes beyond just the M.2 socket. But I think the really important thing is actually more than speed. It's the fact that for years and years and years, when we built desktop PCs, we basically had a case which has contained three chunks of technology. And those chunks have been the motherboard with the processor and the cooler and the memory, they've been the power supply, and they've been the drives. But now, with the introduction of M.2 on standard desktop motherboards, you can build a PC, if you like, in two chunks. The motherboard, including the processor, the cooler, the memory, and the storage, and then the power supply. And indeed, we've already got motherboards with two or even three M.2 sockets. So it's now possible to build really powerful multi-drive PCs without any drive bays at all. And that, I think, is a really important change in the computing industry. It'll alter the way we design and build desktop PCs and their form factor for a long time to come. Anyway, that's now it for another video. If you've enjoyed watching this, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.